Hi students, today we are going to see another method for balancing equation. See in the previous class we have seen oxidation method to balance the equation. Today ion electron method. See in this method we are going to take ionic redox reaction. What do you mean ionic redox reaction? We know redox reaction. Redox reaction means both oxidation as well as reduction takes place in a single equation. That equation only called redox equation. In that we are going to take only ionic part for this balancing reaction. That is why we have to take ionic redox reaction in this method. Then step 1. What is the step 1? We have to take as usual what we will do for oxidation method. Like we want to find which one is undergone oxidation, which one undergone reduction. So the step 1. We want to find which one undergone the oxidation. So, what is the definition for oxidation? Addition of oxygen, removal of hydrogen or loss of electron. So, here for oxidation. Already I told you know, because of ionic redox reaction, oxidation we have to find based on electron transfer. So, loss of electron. Then reduction. How do you find the reduction? Gain of electron. So alternatively we can say decreases, sorry increases of oxidation number, decreases of oxidation number also called it oxidation and reduction. Right. The step 2. What we have to do? We want to take it out the ions which one is undergone the changes in their charge that alone we have to write separately after that we have to balance the charges after balancing charges we can get the net equation for the example we are going to take the same example what we have taken for oxidation method potassium permanganate is reacted with ferrous sulfate potassium permanganate KMnO4 is treated with ferrous sulfate along with some amount of sulfuric acid for acidic medium which gives potassium sulfate manganese sulfate manganese sulfate and then potassium sulfate along with that we will get ferric sulfate, Fe2SO4 thrice. We will get some water. So in this equation, we have to find as usual which one undergone oxidation. How do you find? So for this finding the oxidation reduction, already I told you know the ion terms we have to take it out from this net equation. Here the MnO4 from K1O4 will take MnO4 minus because K plus will go manganese sulfate charge. And then here from the ferrous sulfate will get Fe2 plus. Then acid always will give H plus ions. The product side MnSO4 will get Mn2 plus alone. And then here potassium sulfate, we don't want to write that potassium because both sides which is having same charge. Here also plus one, here also plus one. So you can write for iron, iron having three plus charge, right? Water we know that neutral. So, these are the ions only undergone the equation or 
the charges are changed only in their charges right if you find some other charges you cannot find any other see that h plus just for balancing purpose we have written actually if you see manganese it may change it from plus 7 to plus 2 at the same time iron plus 2 to plus 3 right so we check it which one is undergone the oxidation yes who will tell the charge of mn in the manganese sulfate see we don't know manganese so we can write x what's the charge for sulfur 6 what's the charge for oxygen minus 2 so 4 into minus 2 is equal to what's the net charge in the ion minus 1 right find the x value x is equal to 4 into minus 2 minus 8 so 1 by 1 we will finish plus 6 minus 8 is equal to minus 1 then x minus 2 is equal to minus 1 x equal to minus 1 plus 2 so x will get what's the charge here 4 in wait a minute we have to check it again sorry MnO4 here we have written MnSO4 right so MnO4 means what's the charge of Mn see small changes not MnSO4 because in the reactancy we have MnO4 right so now again find what's the charge of Mn x plus 2 into 4 into minus 2 is equal to minus 1 x minus 8 is equal to minus 1 so x is equal to minus 1 plus 8 so we will get plus 7 is the charge of manganese here right what's the charge of manganese in the potassium permanganate plus 7 right next already we have the charge for iron 2 plus hydrogen plus 1 plus manganese 2 plus iron also 3 plus right suppose sir i don't know how to bring this equation you can find in the above equation also so we know that what is the charge of mn here then try to find the oxygen state for iron see together so 4 always will have minus 2 so one part of one half part of that compound minus 2 means remaining part is equal to plus 2 so here the charge of iron is plus 2 usually hydrogen will carry the plus 1 charge or so 4 becoming minus 2 so 2 hydrogen plus 2 1 hydrogen plus 1 oxidation state then the product side see in the product side also small changes product side only MnO4 MnSO4 so here in the MnSO4 you want to find the charge how do you find see yes x plus 6 plus 4 into minus 2 is equal to 0 then x plus 6 plus 4 into minus 2 minus 8 is equal to 0 so x minus 2 is equal to 0 x equal to plus 2 what's the charge of manganese in manganese sulfate plus 2 right potassium always plus 1 so 4 together minus 2 then 1 potassium plus 1 then here very important already i told you so 4 2 minus so 3 into 2 minus minus 6 so together for 2 ion plus 6 for 1 ion yeah definitely becoming plus 3 water neutral compound now check it in the potassium bermanganate what's the charge of manganese plus 7 what's the charge of iron in ferrous sulfate plus 2 so acid always will give h plus and then manganese 
in the manganese sulfate 2 plus iron 3 plus okay right so now just we have found the charges of all the atom where it gone oxidation or reduction right now tell me which one is undergone the oxidation charge increases means oxidation fine here plus 7 2 plus charge increase or decreased decreased so charge decrease means we can say that is reduction charge decrease means reduction here in the fe 2 plus is converted into 3 plus so charge increase we can say oxidation so just we have found which one undergone the oxidation yes iron which one undergone the reduction manganese but you just remember who is the oxidizing agent who is the oxidizing agent which one undergone the reduction that is only called the oxidizing agent here which one is reducing agent which is undergone the oxidation that is only called the reduction reducing agent or reductance or oxidant that is also we can call it okay right now this equation we need from this equation we can split only this oxidation and reduction reaction separately write the oxidation reaction which one is oxidation reaction fe2 plus is converted into fe3 plus charge decreased fe2 plus is converted into fe3 plus okay tell me how you balance this equation you want to balance this equation charges see here 2 plus here 3 plus either you can change fe2 into 3 or you can change 3 into 2 simple you just add one electron here now this charge becoming minus 1 so what's the net charge in the product side plus 3 minus 1 so we can say total plus 2 here also plus 2 so both side we have balanced the charges right now the same way you take it reduction reaction so you just consider this is the equation 1 then second equation what will you write MnO4 from the potassium permanganate okay and then some electron we have to add that electron we will add Mn2 plus here don't forget what's the charge of manganese Mn plus 7 I left some space because we have to add some electron we don't know how much electron right plus 7 is changed into plus 2 right here very important thing this is oxidation reaction oxidation reaction means we have to add electron sorry remove electron product said if you write we have to remove electron reduction reaction means we have to add electron so how you add the electron how many electron may be added to form this reduction reaction here plus 7 plus 2 so plus 7 plus 2 what is the difference plus 5 so if the manganese gained 5 electron it may reduce into mn2 plus so how many electron we have to add 5 electron listen carefully this is oxidation reaction oxidation means loss of electron so how many electron may removed or lost for this formation fe2 plus 2 3 plus one electron it may lost the same way this is reduction reaction reduction reaction means gain of electron so how many electron the manganese may accepted or gain to becoming mn2 plus 5 electron okay you can consider this is equation 2 now we have to add equation 1 and 2 how do you add 
you just multiply the equation 1 with 5. Why sir? If you want to add, you want to cancel this electron. Because in the chemical equation, we cannot write electron and all. Right? Because of that, we want to cancel this electron. For that purpose, the equation 1, we have to multiply with 5. So, equation 1 is multiply with 5. So, we will get 5. Fe2 plus will give 5 Fe3 plus plus 5 electron. Now you can consider this equation 3. Equation 3 is added with equation 2. So add equation 3 plus equation 2. So we can add equation 2. MnO4 minus plus 5 electrons will give Mn2 plus. Okay. How do you add? 5 electrons you can cancel into both sides. See, if you add this equation, here 5 electrons cancel. Right? Remaining you add MnO4 minus plus 5 Fe2 plus will give 5 Fe3 plus plus Mn2 plus. So now we have balanced only the charges of the ions. Okay. See if this is the balanced equation. From this equation you could balance the other equations also. Right. So one more thing. One step we have to change it. This before addition, we have to change something in this equation. What we have to change is see, we have to add, we have to check the charges also. Here 2 plus 2 plus. We have checked in this equation. But this equation we didn't check. We have to check the equation. What's the net charge here? Minus 1, 5 minus totally. You forgot these numbers, right? You just remember total charge of this reactant side minus 1, minus 5. So, totally we have minus 6. Okay. So, we want to balance this equation that minus 5, sorry, minus 6 by adding 8 hydrogen and also oxygen. First, you try to balance the oxygen. In the reactant side, we have manganese as well as oxygen. In the product side, we have only manganese. We have to balance this oxygen. How many oxygens we have in the MnO4? Four. So, for balancing this, that four oxygen, we have to add in this equation four H2O. If you add four H2O, you have to add that hydrogen in the reactant side. Listen carefully why I am adding this four water molecule. We have to balance the oxygen, four oxygen. So four water molecule I have added. For addition of water, we may increase eight hydrogen in the product side. So in the reactant side also you have to add eight hydrogen alone. So Product side, we can add as a water reactant side for balancing the hydrogen alone we want to balance. Suppose we want to add 4 H2. If you add 4 H2, that is also correct. But we need as an ionic reaction. How can we add 4 hydrogen? Only we can get it from the sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid will not give us a molecule, only H+. That's why we are taking as a 8H plus. Now you can add this equation along with equation. This is 2. Equation 3 already told. How do you modify this equation into 3? If you add 5, it becoming equation 3. This one you can consider 4. So now we got new 2 equations. Third and fourth. Now you add up this equation. If you cancel it, we will get the net reaction. How do you cancel? 
What are the terms? Can you cancel phi electrons? Phi electrons, right? Then remaining you just add up phi Fe two plus plus m n O four minus plus eight H plus will give phi Fe three plus plus m n two plus plus four H two. So this is our final balanced equation, right? See, in this equation we have some charges. The charges alone we have to balance, right? The step three, both half reaction we have added. We got the ionic equation. So up to this equation enough to balance this equation, right? See in the oxidation method, we may balance all those atoms only. But first, initially we may balance the oxidation number. But finally, we will calculate reactions. How many atoms? Product side, how many atoms like that? But in this electron method, you just balance the electron in the ionic equation, not in the neutral equation, right? Yes, my dear students, we have finished this lesson. We are going to start the next lesson that is nothing but fifth unit alkali and alkaline yak metals. What's our next lesson? Alkali and alkaline. Earth metals. How many of you know the periodic table, my dear students? It is like a parse. We know very well. Okay. In the bottom also we have two box. Right. The first two vertical columns are called the S block. Listen carefully. The periodic table, the first two vertical columns are called the S block. The middle D block. Next one is P block. The bottom we can call it F block. Now these two vertical columns is called the S block elements. In the X, X block element, the first vertical column is called alkali metals. The second vertical column, the S block element, is called alkaline earth metals. Are you clear about this one? So now we are going to see the two vertical columns in the beginning of the periodic table is called S block element, right? So S block elements only they are given the other name alkali and alkaline earth metals. Okay. See. The first two columns, first one alkali metals. What do you mean alkali, right? So alkali means it is an having some other meaning. Alkali means alkali from the Greek word, right? Alkali meaning plant ashes. If you burn the plant, you will get some ash. You know that plant ashes only. We can call it alkali. So alkali means what's the exact meaning? Plant ashes, right? So in the why they are calling that plant ashes? If you say the about potassium, we know that potassium atom. The potassium atom also called under name potash. What do you mean potash? That is nothing but. The extract, water extract of plant ashes, right? So if you burn the plant, that ash will have some character that is only called it potash, right? What type of chemical compound is present in that ashes? Potassium carbonate. Maximum we may have. Potassium 
कार्बोनेट और समालोचन फार्मूला फॉर पोटेशियम कार्बोनेट K2CO3 right so that is only called a potass if you dissolve this potassium carbonate in water it may produce like potassium hydroxide so potassium hydroxide KOH is nothing but base we know acid base right so alkali indirectly called basic compounds right if you take all these vertical groups the s yes block elements having metal character as well as basic in nature right see what are the elements present in the first group there are two group see two groups separately we can write first one is called a 1s group second one is called 2s group right it is also called alkali metals so alkali metals what are the elements are present listen lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium francium what are the elements present in the first group element lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium right so in this group this rubidium and cesium not we can get maximum amount we will get only small amount in nature right alternatively francium it is an radioactive element so radioactive element which is not easily extractable right <coughs> listen carefully here that half life period of that francium only 21 minutes right what do you mean half life period half life period see half life period means my full age suppose i am i will die in my 60 age means 60th age means what is my half life period 30 the same way the half life period of francium radioactive element is 21 minutes very important one more okay but all this group elements are soft in nature right but they are highly reactive they are highly reactive easily they will react with other compound so always we can get their elements as a compounds or oxides we cannot get as a free element from that okay see the electronic configuration other things you will see in the next video thank you